two, one. Hi hey guys. guys! The topic Debbie and I have chosen to talk about is one that we consider to be incredibly interesting because it involves a pretty controversial drug, cannabis. We've chosen to examine the effect of cannabis use on teenage brain development. More specifically, we want to investigate how the frequency of cannabis use during developmental years affects the brain's executive functions, particularly working memory. Our research question asks, does cannabis use affect working memory? Considering the brain's malleability during the teenage developmental years, cannabis use could be particularly destructive to the brain's development. Due to legalization, inexpensive costs, curiosity, and peer pressure, marijuana has become increasingly more available to an influential and younger audience. Current research remains rather unclear about whether or not the effects of cannabis use on the brain are pre-existing, caused by external factors outside of marijuana use, or if they can be resolved through rehabilitation. What makes this study so significant is its ability to provide necessary information previous studies have fallen short on producing answers for. In addition to finding conclusive evidence for unanswered questions, it aims to provide effective drug education and hopefully promote abstinence from the illicit substance. We hypothesize frequent use of the drug negatively affects working memory. We predict the more frequent the use, the more poor an adolescent's working memory will become. So let's talk about what experiments we're gonna be conducting. So our independent variable is gonna be smoking cannabis, the frequency of which we're smoking, and the dependent variable is gonna be our working memory. And based on the results of our working memory test that I'm about to explain, we're gonna either confirm or disconfirm our hypothesis that weed affects working memory negatively. So basically, we're gonna conduct the experiment once before smoking and once after smoking. Both Debbie and I are gonna conduct the experiments on our own. We're gonna have a total of six trials. On the screen in front of us, there are gonna be a series of letters flashing in front of us, and they're only gonna be on the screen for a couple seconds. They're gonna come off the screen, and it's our job to remember what letters we just saw, and we're gonna write them down in our chart. As the trials continue from one through six, there are gonna be increasingly more letters, and it's gonna get increasingly more difficult to memorize, and we're really gonna put our working memory to the test while sober and while high. That's it. Did you find that to be easy? Awesome. Got a little difficult at the end. I was a little distracted, but I was also, it got a little hard. <laughs> Not gonna lie to you. Now we're gonna double check if her answers are all correct. <gasps> oh. While sober, Debbie got four out of six trials correct. I'm starting my test now. Honestly, I found that to be pretty difficult, and I'm really nervous to check out my results. You should be. Now we're gonna check out my results. Check your results on this page. Let's see. So she go one, two, three, four. L B F Q. I know that one's not right. Uh, oh, I forgot the, the P. The P, like Mother. I did. I put a B. C that one's not right. That no, was she not. did okay. not know what was going on. So, Debbie and I are even so far for our first experiment completely sober. Let's see if we get better when we... Yeah, no. <laughs> Adolescence is defined by the physical and hormonal changes associated with puberty and it typically ends with an individual attaining an independent and stable role in society. During teenage development, the brain is considered most malleable, becoming increasingly more capable of changing, adapting, and responding to its environment. One of the main changes associated with adolescent development is a process known as synaptic pruning. Unused connections in the thinking and processing regions of the brain, known as gray matter, are pruned away, and this process severs synaptic connections in the brain, eliminating extra neurons that serve no purpose. 
Development in adolescence begins in the back of the brain and moves its way toward the front of the brain. One of the brain regions that develops substantially during teenage development is the prefrontal cortex, responsible for several executive functions such as memory, decision-making, inhibitory control, and planning. Background studies are inconsistent, and imaging studies that focus on marijuana's impact on the brain structure have shown contradictory results. Some studies suggest marijuana use during adolescence is associated with altered connectivity and reduced volume in the regions of the brain responsible for executive functions such as memory. In contrast, other studies have definitively stated that there are no major structural differences found among people who do use the drug and people who do not. Furthermore, some evidence has even suggested that most of the subtle cognitive effects caused by the drug are likely to resolve themselves after a long-term period of abstinence. In all, the majority of research conducted to date supports poorer cognitive performance on measures such as attention, learning, and memory in adolescent cannabis users. However, information pertaining to frequency or severity of cannabis use in younger participants, which is likely to play a significant role in brain development, is relatively under-researched and conflicting at times. Multiple studies that Debbie and I found did not answer how marijuana affects the brains of adolescent teens or their development in terms of their motor skills, cognitive or executive functioning abilities. Many of the studies that we found were considered far reaching, which made them insufficient as well. Other environmental factors such as alcohol consumption, tobacco and drug treatments may have negatively affected the brain development as well, in addition to smoking cannabis. So we have confounding variables at play. Some studies even failed to answer whether rehabilitation programs could reverse the decline in cognitive ability caused by cannabis use in individuals younger than 18. And several studies after that have failed to determine which abnormalities can be attributed to adolescent marijuana use and which abnormalities predate the cannabis exposure. The difference between the brain function and adolescent participants before and after the use of cannabis has yet to be determined. And we're back. <laughs> really focused, because I Debbie is going for trial number two. Are you ready? ready? Pen down. Pen down until it's time. Yeah. <laughs> a little more confident? I don't know. Maybe a little bit more, but maybe not. But maybe not. Yeah, maybe I got them right. We are going to check Debbie's results and see how many trials she got correct. Ironically enough, Debbie made the exact same mistakes on this experiment as she did on the other one. I was close at the end. Close enough. Closer. Closer. Now it's my turn. Let's see which one of us is better. Oh, I just realized something. We have a confounding variable here. We're not allowed to look. Yeah, I know. I covered him with my arm. Oh, okay. Let's, let's. Yeah. Okay, let's just confirm. I'm gonna be checking my results because Debbie is too scared to check them because she knows I got a better mark. No, she didn't. Now, I got every single trial correct. She was beside. <laughs> so, experiment over. Let's debrief. Oh my. All right, now that both experiments are complete, Debbie and I are gonna debrief our thoughts on the experiment. Can you like to start? I'll do it, fine. I find it interesting that one of us is quite affected after smoking and one of us is quite unaffected after smoking. I do find that interesting how our results differ there and how I actually got less correct when I was sober than I did after. But with that being said, I do think there are a couple of confounding variables at play. I think that because we're repeating the same sequences, there is a possibility maybe we're memorizing some of them, like the really small and simple ones in the beginning. Um, and 
maybe sometimes we might be able to see not that anyone's intentionally cheating but there is a possibility of that and we're both filming and checking each other's answers so yeah there's definitely a possibility that we could be memorizing the sequences but interesting interesting we need an outside person we need an outside perspective we need to make this experiment global whoa why Thank you so much for watching, Mandy. We really appreciate you. We love you. Thank you for an awesome semester. We this experiment you. was so much fun and we couldn't have done it without the help of your assignment. So we love you. Love you. Take care. I love you, Mandy. Love you. <laughs>